I spent the last few days only at home, alone, in an empty apartment. My boyfriend just got a great job offer in another state. We had wanted to leave Florida for a long time, so when he got the job, we immediately packed our things and left town. We paid a month's rent for the apartment we used to rent, but I couldn't say goodbye to some of my close friends. Since we had already paid rent for a month, I thought about going back on my own and spending a few more weeks here. Luckily, my job provides flexibility and I have the opportunity to work from my office in Florida or from home. So even though the apartment seems empty without my boyfriend, I have a good workspace and it keeps me busy. However, I said the apartment was empty, but I felt like it wasn't entirely true. I remembered that I have a cat that didn't come with us. We took him to our new place. While I was reading my favorite book on the air mattress, I heard a lot of noise coming from the kitchen. I just thought my cat was noisy again, because he was usually like that. Most of the time, he was knocking things over either for fun or to annoy me. I saw red solo glasses on the floor in the kitchen. I just thought my cat had knocked something over and went back to reading a book. But then I remembered, even my bachelor wasn't here. We went to our new place. I clumsily rolled off the air mattress, tried to be quiet, and went to the kitchen to see what the noise was about. I found some red glasses on the ground. All I thought was that the fan was on and it was blowing them away. But in fact, the glasses had been on the counter all day and the fan had been running four hours. Why did they suddenly drop now? I tried not. In the middle of the night, I woke up with a strange sound. It sounded like someone was shaking coins or keys. It was something I had never heard before and it sounded like it was coming from outside, but it was very loud. As soon as I got out of bed, the sound stopped. I turned on all the lights but couldn't find where it was coming from. So I lay back with the lights on. I felt safer with the lights on and fell asleep quickly. When I woke up in the morning, I didn't realize all the lights in the house were off until I turned on the bathroom light. No one ever said I was a sleepwalker but I couldn't think of any other reason why all the lights were off. I had locked the door, a deadlock on it and a regular lock. I showered and got dressed. Then I looked for my keys, but couldn't find them in my bag. Maybe I accidentally put them in the freezer, grocery bag, or on the kitchen counter, but I looked everywhere and they weren't there. Then I remembered the knocking sound I heard at night. My current phone was a little slow so I decided to buy a new one from Craigslist. Within minutes, I found the perfect deal, a new iPhone 12 for just $400. I immediately tried to contact the seller, but received no response. This seemed a little strange, but I figured they might be busy, so I didn't care. But I still haven't received an answer. In the end, he just sent his address, without saying anything else. I answered, but he didn't answer any more and ignored me. After getting the address, I made a stupid decision and went to his house the next day. As I landed on a rough street, I noticed that none of the houses appeared to be occupied by anyone, but I ignored it and continued my journey. The house was dark and the wood looked old and rough. As I approached the front door, I saw that the grass was long and stiff, almost up to my knees, about a foot high. As I approached the door, the door suddenly opened and the man came out from behind. Do you want the phone? Yell. He had a deep voice. Yes, I have $400 in cash with me. Is that okay? I said. He took the money from me and closed the door in my face. Hey, what's going on? I shouted, feeling both angry and upset, not knowing what to do. I remember waiting at the door for a long time. Finally, he slowly opened the door and just handed over the phone. I took it and thanked him, then turned and walked away. I didn't hear him close the door and when I got into my car, I looked back and saw he was still watching me. It gave me a spine tingling sensation, so I pressed the gas pedal hard. When I got home, I was too tired to set up the phone and fell asleep as soon as my head touched the pillow. When I woke up in the morning and turned on the phone, I noticed something strange. 
It was still logged into the previous owner's account, probably the creepy guy who sold me the phone. Being a little curious and wanting to look inside, I answered the phone. There were very few photos, nothing in the camera roll, but when I checked the albums, I found something. I finally found an album, one fun night. I thought the photos or videos in this album would be really unique, but they weren't. There were only two videos. I played the first video and the screen was black. All I could hear was the sound of light rain. After a few seconds, the camera moved up and focused on a car outside. He focused on the car for more than 30 seconds. I couldn't understand what was happening. Suddenly, a woman got out of the car. I didn't know this woman and had never seen her before. The camera kept focusing on him and a man started laughing like crazy. I recognized this man's voice. It was the voice of the man who sold me this phone. Was this video a joke? When I played the second video, it was much longer than the first video. While the first video lasted two minutes, this one lasted seven minutes. The sound of rain could be heard on a black screen, but this time it sounded like it was in an old warehouse. About 45 seconds in, I heard a woman crying softly. I didn't watch the video because my instincts told me something wasn't right. I didn't waste any time and called the police. I showed them the video and explained how I got the phone. Luckily, they took it seriously and went to the scary man's house, but he was already gone. The house wasn't his. It was just an abandoned house. The police took my phone to find more information and I haven't gotten it back since. I think next time I should buy a phone from a mobile store. I usually go for a walk around my neighborhood, but this time I decided to explore new areas. One day, I discovered there was a park a few miles from my house. The park is really big. There are lots of trees and open spaces. I think there are more trails than I know about. As I walked along, enjoying the views, I saw the opening of a path I don't usually use. It really caught my attention, so I started exploring it without thinking too much. Sunset was approaching, probably around 7 p.m., so I wasn't planning on going too far from the main trail. The park had a rule that everyone had to leave at a certain time, and I didn't want to be left alone in the forests in the dark. After walking for a while, I left the main path and began exploring a different part of the park. I should point out that the park is not like a camping area, just a regular park, so I was surprised to see that there was a cabin here. I couldn't tell who lived there or what happened there, but it clearly looked like no one had cared for years. As I wandered around the cabin, I wondered if it might be on someone's private land, and I'm afraid I had strayed a bit, but I felt like I needed to check out the cabin, so I went, I don't know why but I wanted to see the inside of the cabin. I didn't really want to go in, but I felt like something wasn't right and I needed to take a step to figure out what it was. I walked around the cabin, trying to stay at least 20 feet away, just in case anyone was there. Suddenly, I heard a loud noise from behind. I heard something hit really hard. It scared me and I wanted to run away immediately, but I took a few more steps to see where it was coming from. When I went to the back of the booth, I saw a girl as young as my age. I saw him knocking on the window in the basement and asking for help. I immediately ran to him and tried to open the window, but he got even more scared and put his finger on his lips, signaling me to be quiet. I immediately realized that he wanted me to remain silent. I saw that I couldn't open the window and knew I had to get help quickly, so I tried calling the police on my phone, but I had no signal. I was really scared and didn't know what to do. I moved as close to he window as possible and offered to help her using the notes app on my phone. I wanted to see if he knew if there was anyone else in the house or if there was something else going on around him at that moment, but he shook his head, pointing, indicating that he had no idea about that. I told him I would help him escape and told him to calm down. I peered carefully at the front door, checking its surroundings and silently trying to turn the doorknob. Of course the front door was already locked, 
so I continued to scan around silently and tried to quietly open the door. As expected, the front door was already locked, so I continued to wander around, but the windows were all locked. So I ran into the woods to look for something to break a window with. After a while, I found a large stone that would break a window. I went back and showed the girl the rock. Then I remember how hard I threw the rock at the window, completely breaking the glass. He got up and I grabbed his hand to help him, but it was no use. He was too big to fit through the window. So I did something. Unexpected but necessary. I went over to the cabin and used the same rock to break one of the large windows. I looked inside to see no one there, and luckily, I didn't see anyone. Then I jumped in. I carefully checked every room and saw that there was no one there. Then I went down to the basement and found him. Someone had left him alone in a small cage, about five times eight feet. There were many bruises, marks and dried blood on him. Finally I found a large hammer and used it to break the lock. I hurriedly helped the girl and put her feet on a pair of shoes I found near the door. We moved as fast as we could and headed towards my car. It was going to take a while since we were far away and he could barely walk and we knew I couldn't carry him. As we were leaving the front porch, we heard a car in the distance. We couldn't see much because it was getting dark. Emily, the girl I saved, thought it might be the man who kidnapped her. I didn't want to take any risks, so we moved quickly to avoid being seen. We tried to act quickly considering the situation, and luckily he hadn't seen us, and we moved away when he was around the cabin. I took him to the hospital, and he told the police what he knew about what happened to her. I stayed with him until I received assurance from the doctors that he would recover. I haven't received a full report from the police, and I don't know where Emily is today, but I hope she's okay. For me, I still have nightmares about that night. A few years ago, my girlfriend and I went on a road trip. At the end of the first day, we found a place to sleep. We found an old hotel. It looked nice and had colors. Small trees and plants were everywhere. A couple was working there and they showed us to our place. Our bedroom wasn't very nice. It was old and not updated, but we were happy to give a space because the old couple were friendly and we wanted to support them. My girlfriend and I watched TV for a while, then got tired. Then we turned off the TV and lights and went to sleep. In the middle of the night, I woke up when I heard steps in our room. Since I was still sleepy, I looked around but couldn't see anything and went back to sleep. Then I felt like someone was watching me and when I looked I saw the old couple smiling at me at the end of the bed. I felt like I was going to have a heart attack, I asked. Why they were there, the old lady told us that they wanted to check if we were sleeping there. I thought they were crazy, my girlfriend said she was going to call the police and took out her phone. The old man apologized and said it was unnecessary. He called the police anyway. The police arrived within minutes and admitted that the elderly couple had broken into our room with a spare key, but said they were still only. Concerned about our well-being, the police asked if we wanted to charge them, but we told them no because we thought they were weird and just weird. The rest of our holiday was fine but now we double check the door when staying at a hotel. Thank you for listening to my stories so far. If you enjoyed it and want more, don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications to stay tuned. I can't wait to entertain you even more with new stories and interesting topics.